my name is Kurt Gaudier. I had my left SI joint fused back in the spring of 2022. I had fallen off a roof and landed on a, a metal fence on my uh, sacrum. My pain affected my life uh, substantially. I'd been a marathon runner and a triathlete and a hunter and do a lot of dirt biking, both motocross and enduro riding. And it had gotten so bad that uh, I was doing nothing. I really noticed the pain uh, a lot is when I was standing up. That journey was, uh, was about a five year journey of uh, doing anything and everything that I could to see various different doctors dealing with insurance companies. And I never, I never got a diagnosis. Everybody basically said, you know, physical therapy, aspirin, ibuprofen, and uh, that there was nothing that they could do for me. And uh, I wasn't satisfied with that because <laughs> it, it pretty much it stopped uh, me living my life the way that I wanted to live it. And that's what ultimately led me to Dr. Claire. My name is Christian Clare. I'm a member of New Hampshire Orthopedic Center. I'm an orthopedic spine surgeon, and we're here today to discuss sacroiliitis and sacroiliac joint fusion. So the sacroiliac joint is at the base of the spine. Uh, the bone at the bottom of the spine is called our sacrum, and it connects to our pelvic bone, the ilium. Uh, the two bones are connected by the sacroiliac joint. It's a very strong joint and acts as the body's shock absorber, where it transmits force from the lower extremities to the upper body. When I see patients with sacroiliitis, they usually complain of back pain. Uh, sometimes the pain can radiate into the buttocks, down the legs, or even into the groin. Sacroiliac joint pain can be very common. Um, it can be seen in up to 15 to 30 percent of patients with chronic low back pain. Up to 40 percent of patients with uh, low back pain in the setting of a previous lumbar fusion can also have symptomatic sacroiliac joints. It's important to rule out other causes of pain because if we do go down the surgical road, we want to ensure that we're operating on the correct area. So that's why we take a lot of time to specifically diagnose the sacroiliac joint before operating on it. When diagnosing a patient with chronic back pain, typically we'll start out with a history. So I want to know where the pain is originating from. We ask about any type of radiation of symptoms. Uh, we'll then move on to a physical exam. So I'll ask the patient to show me where the pain is coming from. We'll do provocative testing to determine whether or not the pain is coming from the sacroiliac joint. Oftentimes there will be imaging, including x-rays, sometimes an MRI to evaluate for potential sources of pain. And oftentimes injections can be very helpful in determining what is causing pain, um, either coming from the spine or coming from the sacroiliac joint. This is an injection performed using imaging guidance where we'll actually inject a local anesthetic or a numbing medicine directly into the joint. The idea behind doing this type of injection is that if the sacroiliac joint is the pain generator, we should see an immediate decrease in pain following the administration of the numbing agent. When a patient is diagnosed with sacroiliac joint dysfunction or sacroiliitis, there are a number of different conservative measures that we can start with. Uh, these include things like physical therapy, medications such as anti-inflammatories, or bracing, which would be a sacroiliac belt. Injections can also be performed, and if a patient gets to the point where conservative measures and injections are no longer providing pain relief, then surgery can be considered as an option. The IFUSE procedure is performed either in the hospital or a surgical center setting. The surgery typically takes about an hour. It's done through an incision two to three centimeters, which is located on the side of the buttock. Through the incision, we place three triangular implants across the sacroiliac joint, which provides stability and gives a fusion across the joint. The surgery takes about an hour and patients are able to be discharged on the same day. After surgery, patients are restricted to how much they are bending, twisting, and lifting for the first six weeks before beginning physical therapy. When we suspect the sacroiliac joint as being a pain generator on history and physical exam, we often move on to confirmation using a diagnostic block. It was kind of, for me, it was like an aha moment when they did the injection. When the lidocaine got in there and I got up and I was like, five years of pain, gone. Like, gone. So I, I was going to have the surgery uh, no matter what. But in speaking with somebody from the SI buddy program, it, it what it did was it is it eased my mind uh, that I had somebody that had been in my shoes that had gone through this procedure that I'd never even heard of before and, and came out okay. Post-surgery, uh, I was able to do everything that I had been doing before. I have, I have no, no restrictions, I, have, I, had, I had my life back, basically. 
The sacral electrode is often overlooked as a potential pain generator in chronic low back pain. If any of the symptoms that we've talked about today sound familiar to you, feel free to reach out to the office at New Hampshire Orthopedic Center to schedule an evaluation.